Hey, uh, have you ever felt like your characters are the ones writing the story and not you? Where they're telling you what to write and where to write it, and you're saying, all right, I'm trying to listen, but could you keep it down? You're all talking at once. And uh, ultimately, they make it difficult for you as a writer to be a writer and to organize those thoughts into coherent narratives. Well, <laughs> hey, <laughs> don't let characters derail your story. These are tips for narrative control because today we're going to explore how to keep your characters in line with your outlines ensuring they enhance rather than hijack your narrative but why is that important thomas well mastering this technique allows you to maintain control over your stories a direction and coherence but thomas what is taming your characters about Taming your characters to stay within your outlines means guiding your characters to follow the structure and path you've set for them without allowing them to derail the plot or dominate the narrative unduly. This has to do with things like, well, I have a bunch of scenes, I have scene ideas, I have character ideas, but I just don't know how to connect those scenes, I don't know how to connect the character through lines. Does this story have to do with the first book, second book, third book, fourth book, et cetera, et cetera? And then when you come up with ideas, the characters say, no, that's not what actually happens. So today's video is going to show you how to tame that behavior now from your characters. But before we go any further, I like to give tips and tricks. So here's four tips. The first one, structured planning. The short of it. Basically, use detailed outlines to define the limits and growth of your characters. But the long of it is begin by crafting detailed outlines that not only plot out your narrative's main events, but also define your character's roles within these events, specifically where each character starts and key moments of their development and where they end up by the narrative's conclusion. You know, you have to also give yourself purpose purposeful constraints because you by setting limitations or limits on what your characters can and cannot do within the narrative, these constraints can be based on their personality traits, uh, the relationships they have with other characters, or the external circumstances of the plot. Uh, additionally, working out your growth arcs for your characters is a way so you can plan out each character's growth, how they will change over the course of the narrative, and basically this helps in maintaining consistency in their actions and ensures that the development is gradual and believable. Two, <laughs> character dialogue. Now, the short of it is allow them to speak, but keep their dialogue and actions aligned with the narrative's goal. Uh, an example means if your character's like, well, I want to talk about horses, but, you know, how many pages do you really need to be talking about horses if it doesn't influence the narrative. So the long of it is have purposeful dialogue. Ensure that each line of dialogue serves as a purpose, whether it's pushing the plot forward, revealing character traits, or building the world of your narrative. Avoid unnecessary tangents that don't contribute to these goals. By doing this, you'll also start establishing character voices. Each character should have a distinct voice that reflects their background, personality, and current situation. Believe it or not, these uniquenesses help to maintain clarity about who is speaking and enhances the realism of the conversations. Additionally, you want your dialogue to align with the plot, and therefore you have to regularly check that your characters' actions and dialogues are not only true to their personalities, but also help advance the plot. If a dialogue or any dialogue seems out of sync with the narrative's objectives, revise it to steer the character back towards supporting the narrative. Thrace. Feedback loops. The short of it, regularly step back and evaluate the character's development and, uh, and make sure it's in sync with your narrative. It's okay to take a breather. But the long of it, Get regular reviews, schedule times to step back from the writing process to review your narrative from a broader perspective. This can help spot inconsistencies or areas where characters may seem to act out of turn with the established plot or their character growth. But more importantly, 
beta readers, and editors. Utilize feedback from beta readers and editors who can provide an external perspective on whether your characters are behaving consistently and whether the development aligns with the narrative. Uh, and of course, you have to have a cat. Uh, additionally, adaptation and adjustment. You gotta be prepared to adjust your outlines based on the feedback. <laughs> I don't know what that was. If a character's dialogue is not aligned well uh, with the narrative, consider uh, whether the issue is with the character's actions or the surrounding plot and make necessary changes. And finally, number four, common mistakes. The short of it, you have to avoid letting a character's backstory or side plots overshadow the main narratives. So what is the long of it? Well, ensure that any backstory or side plot introduced is relevant to the main storyline. It should add depth to the character or enhance the audience's understanding of the plot and not divert attention away from it. So that means you need to maintain a balance between character development and plot progression. While it's important to flesh out your characters with backstories, these elements should not stale the progression of the main plot. Integration. Okay. Is vital to this and this is how we integrate how how we integrate backstories and side plots smoothly into the narrative you want to use them to add complexity to the plot or to build up a specific plot point rather than letting them stand alone as di disconnected pieces of narrative all right so i'm going to do a walkthrough and show you uh what it looks like for a character to sort of be talking to you and then how to take control of that um before I jump into that, if, you if you're enjoying what you're watching, especially this lesson, uh, and you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Remember to like, comment, and share the video as well to keep this channel going strong and healthy. Let's do it. Let's get into it. The first, the first thing we're going to do, okay? The first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to talk about character ideas being presented, all right? So this is when uh, you're just sort of hanging out and characters go, hey, we have ideas. So it's all about putting them into a specific. So let's say uh, character Thomas ideas. Okay, character Thomas ideas jumps in, says, I got some ideas, buddy. And I go, all right, what are they? And the first one is, um, well, now remember I write epic fantasy. So this is just an epic fantasy example. But uh, well, camping with his group. Um, he and uh, Melissa end up uh, having a conversation about uh, the history of um, Bloomed, uh, the city of flowers. All right. And, um, uh, and how the city uh, is supposed to to be the most beautiful city in the world. Okay. The second thing is uh, maybe maybe there's another Tom idea. Uh, oh, uh, he ends up fighting uh, five people and they have a really awesome sword fight. Fight where Thomas has to outwit them because he loses his sword and... They are much better swordsmen, but he, he is able to outthink with the use of environment. Environment. Sword. Okay. And then maybe, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe the Melissa character. All right. She's like, I have ideas, too. And then uh, she tells me she goes, she goes. Uh, I've been in love with uh, Marcus uh, since we were six years old and I've not seen him in 20 years. I hear he is married. Uh, with children now, and uh, I've not, uh, uh, and I'm scared to see him 
in the coming weeks when we get to Dardar, uh, the city. Oh, I should just say to Dardar City. Now, keep in mind, I'm just I'm just making up fake names, funny fake names. All right, so let's say that's the deal. So, <clears throat> so right off the bat, the characters gave me ideas. I just did three ideas just to make it straight to the point. Okay, so uh, the Thomas character gave me two ideas, and the Melissa character gave me an idea, but they're just ideas. They aren't actual stories. Uh, let's be honest. Um, you know, uh, this is not a, sto a story. This is just an idea. While camping with his group, he and Melissa end up having a conversation about the history of Bloomed, the city of flowers, and how the city is supposed to be the most beautiful city in the world. That's just an idea. There's no story there. There's no narrative purpose, right? So while I'm working on the ideas that are being filtered through me from the characters, you know, my job is to make narrative sense of it. And like, again, if you're using the 27 chapter outline, we have to organize these thoughts. So that brings us to organizing these thoughts. All right. So that means, okay, if I was uh, the guy I am, I'll tell you. And <clears throat> this is why boop, we got to look at this, right? So we have to organize those ideas into the 27 plot point outline, right? And right now, the best thing to do is to focus just on these three things, the ordinary world disrupting uh, disruption and reaction to the inciting incident. However, I could look at all of them and sort of like try to leak this through. Um, but you have to say to yourself, is this the main idea? Is this particular one while camping with his group, he and Melissa end up having a conversation about, uh, the history of bloomed, the city of flowers and how the city is supposed to be the most beautiful city in the world. Is that the main plot line? It, it might not be. Maybe this is maybe fighting these people, whoever these people are is the main plot line. So I have to figure out who that is, or maybe this is the main plot line. I have to decide that as the writer, that's that's where I come in as the writer. So these ideas are just ideas. They're not stories. So I have to make choices. For simplicity, I'm just going to make this first thing uh, the main storyline, which is uh, well camping. Uh, he and Melissa have a conversation about the history of Bloomed, the city of flowers, and how the city is supposed to come. So if I'm looking at this, <clears throat> right, let's go Let's go to a, a, a streamlined version just so it's easier, right? I don't have chapters yet. Uh this is just a template that I have. Um, I will also put this in the uh, the, uh, the 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 folder, okay? But just just as an example, let's do this. Let's say uh, the city of bloom, okay? So that's that's gonna be. Maybe I'll do I'll do one of these oranges, okay? So this is gonna be the main plot line. OK, and maybe just so my brain doesn't have to deal with uh, thinking, I'll go down and I'll just I'll just fill in some stuff. Right. OK. But like I said, we're only going to do the first three plot points. So uh, let me go back up. All right. So that means I got to set up the ordinary world. I got to explain to uh, uh, the, uh, the the narrative that uh, there is a city uh, bloom, which means, by the way, I could actually do this. I could go to the prologue and I could have a, um, a scene where people are moving around the city of Bloom. Okay. Uh, there are flowers everywhere and people are helping one another. It's a beautiful paradise. I totally spelled that wrong, I believe. Oh, no, I got it right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> And um, let's say uh, there are two prom prom promodent characters. What's going on? Here? I can't I can't spell, but that's all right. Every great writer has a great editor. Promodent 
uh, permanent. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's why. All right. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Characters. Um, uh, Devi. Uh, Jornt of Bloomed and uh, Devo uh, Alyssa <laughs> of Bloomed. All right, again, I'm just making up quick names. All right, so what did I just do there? I also did some world building in my in my brainstorming here. So uh, a Devi is like a king and a Devo is a queen. Right, but they're not going to be king and queen because I'm going to try to get away from the Western style of storytelling. So, but in my mind, I know a Devi is sort of like a leader. They are the male version of the leader, and a Devo is the female leader. And now that I say it, I could even be like, they're joint leaders. They may be husband and wife, or they may just be uh, a, a guy and a girl that work together because the offices, uh, the, the office of those titles, uh, work together. See, I'm world building before I even get to it. I, I could technically write that in. I could be like, these uh, these two people are not married. They hold leadership titles within the city of Bloom uh, and are uh, friends who believe in a lot of the same things, but also push back uh, with strong convictions and communication that allows for things to be worked out. So <clears throat> you might be thinking, oh, that sounds like a paradise. Well, that's the point. It's supposed to sound like a paradise. Why? Because my brain is already thinking. I'm already thinking ahead where this is the prologue. So what is the twist going to be? What is the reveal going to be? What is the truth of the lie? Well, it turns out this city was destroyed. The city doesn't exist anymore. This is the past. This is what it once was, but it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore. Okay? But now I know. Now I know that I'm going to have them that their dream is to find the city of bloom because the stories are always talking about it. So, uh I want to establish both uh, Thomas and Melissa living um, in a part of the world where they just don't have oper opportunity and are uh, trying to figure out their lives. Now, here's another thing I want to do. They are just friends. Oh, just like, just like Jornt and Alyssa. Eh? Eh? They are also just friends. Uh, a little note, there is no romantic uh, feelings. They are friends and friends only. So that's a note to myself. However, that doesn't mean I can't explore romance if it starts coming out in the zero. There are no romance feelings. Romantic feelings. So basically, if I'm writing the zero draft or working out the outline, I could change that. But right now, I want it where they're just friends because I want to mirror the other reality, right? The other the other truth. Okay? And that's just what I'm establishing. Remember, it's just a broad stroke of an idea. It doesn't have to be specific, right? Um, uh, however, uh, Thomas grew up in this current location, and Melissa had come here uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago with her parents who have uh, since uh, moved away, but she made a life here because they had an excellent educational environment that really uh, uh, moved her soul. Okay. Boom. So that's the ordinary world, right? And then I need to, but <clears throat> I want to organize maybe, maybe the inciting incident is that, uh, they hear about this place called bloomed or instead of doing it like that, what happens is I know it's going to lead there, but Melissa finds out that her best friend, 
who she has loved since they were children. Uh, once again, I gotta look at the note. Uh, Marcus, okay. Uh, best friend Marcus, who she's been in love with her children. Uh, 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 wait, wait. Melissa finds out that the father of her best friend Marcus, who she's loved in that, um, her children, has fallen ill and she wants to go back and support him. Okay, so that's the inciting incident because it makes them leave. But we know that this subplot, because remember, whoop, this is her storyline. This is her story, right? This is going to lead them to discover the city of Bloom. So that's why I put it there too. But I could, I could if I really wanted to, I could do this. I could go, um... Melissa and Marcus, right? <clears throat> and maybe uh, I'll make that. Uh, let's make this the color, right? Okay. So then, how do I connect the city of Bloom if that's the main uh, uh, the main thing? Well, then Thomas. Uh, oh, yeah. What? Uh, Melissa asks Thomas to accompany her. Uh, on the long uh, journey, and Thomas agrees uh, uh, because they are good friends, and also it will give him a chance to explore uh, uh, an idea that his grandfather had told told him about. <clears throat> A city uh, that was e uh, uh, beyond its years. Okay, all right. So uh, there's a couple of things there. I, you know, we just did two things. Okay. Um, I will say this though. I'll, I'll say you know sometimes the characters might say, "Well, that's that's not what I want." You know, they're like, "I don't want." I don't want it to be like that. In fact, uh, uh, I don't like the idea of City uh, uh, of Thomas and Melissa just being friends. I want them to be uh, potential lovers or currently lovers. And and then, you know, there'll be a romantic uh, triangle when she gets back and sees Marcus. And it's like, well, I could see how that story goes. I could map it out. But that's the advantage of doing the outline because... We're making sense of those ideas. We're placing them into the 27 chapter outline without overwhelming ourselves with just pages and pages of words. We're just creating these broad stroke ideas to connect the pieces to make sense of it. And as you can see, when you go back to this, I took I got two plot points already in motion from uh, the ordinary world to this. Right. I would probably go back here and again, this is the whole point of the outline is you're allowed to move up and down. I would have to establish, and, I, and by the way, this could just be a general story, establish uh, that Melissa uh, used to live somewhere else, but maybe it doesn't have to be uh, outright. Uh, it doesn't have to be be specifically said um but maybe she is holding uh i don't know a ring or some item maybe a book and inside uh, inside the book is uh is a message from Marcos, uh, from when they were kids, right? So we're setting up, <clears throat> we're setting up the information we need to in their ordinary world, um, to allow for that story uh, element to grow, and then we kind of move it. But again, twenty-seven uh, plot points. You know, 
I might literally just focus on the city of Bloom. And then if I do diverge, like I did where I came down here and I was like, maybe she's the inciting incident, you know, uh, that kind of pulls them off from the ordinary world, um, you know, and that's okay too, right? And then you say to yourself, while you're working on the outline, you as the writer might realize, well, maybe the romance between Melissa and Marcus is the actual story. But you don't have to worry about that right now because you're just outlining these general ideas that these characters are telling you and you're just trying to make sense of it. And you use the outline to make sense because if an idea can hit 27 plot points with strong conviction, you know that's a good strong main plot. But some ideas don't really hold water because maybe you're just not emotionally connecting with it and you realize those plot points could end up being... Uh, or, or I should say that subplot might end up only being in certain plot points you can introduce in the ordinary world. Maybe it's, you know, closer to the twist. Maybe it's whatever the case may be. And you realize, all right, I'm not finding enough connecting beats because the main plot line has to be represented in every single one of the 27 plot points because that's the narrative you're moving forward. Um, however, using the broad stroke method and sort of just kind of like working out the path line, the next logical path line of that idea, it'll take you through each of the 27 plot points. Um, more importantly, you might discover something else while you're doing that. And that's something you should embrace despite the character saying, that's not the story that I deserve because you're the writer. And this is the other thing. Anything you do write, you can delete. And anything you delete, you could bring back. And anything that you try, that's the important part. Remember, the broad strokes allow you to just try with a sentence or two to see what the beat feels like narratively. That's the important thing to remember, is to explore. As a writer, explore the idea. If it's a character telling you the idea, or it's multiple characters just yamming in your head, and you're like, where do I go with this? Just start writing out ideas, just simple, connective ideas using the 27 plot points to sort of dictate the emotional through line. The ordinary world has rules. The inciting incident has rules. Um, if you're looking down, you know, uh, the protagonist's life changes as a result of the action they took and creates pressure and stress has rules. Plot point... Um, plot point eight has rules, which is the first plot twist slash pinch that happens. Right. The midpoint conflict has rules and you just have to work within those rules to place. Uh, you could break those rules a little bit, but they're there to help you with a foundational idea. And you just kind of hit those beats. And now you're making sense of those ideas that the characters had created after you did um, the long form brainstorming. So this is obviously I would have more characters involved from the brainstorming, like, you know, especially if they're all in my head. But as, as a very simple example, here's just three ideas that I've already started putting some shape to. I started adding world building just from working with the outline. I created world building and history. And even though this is just they have a conversation about it, which they haven't had yet, by the way, um, and how the city is supposed to be the most beautiful city in the world, that comes up later. That's just something that I know I have to work towards. And then that scene gets to play out, but at least I made sense of it and worked towards it. Uh, I hope that helps. If you have questions about that, uh, just let me know. Uh, more importantly, which character in your writing has tried to take over the story? And how have you specifically handled it? Let me know in the comments uh, below. Uh, if you haven't done already and uh, you found this video helpful, uh, please like. Uh, comment and share and uh, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out real quick in june or july i'm I'm, I'm doing a backlog of videos uh so i can just schedule them all out with premieres uh so i hope to have a lot of that done by june or july probably more like july I'm going to start doing live Saturday videos again where I outline in real time or I do character development in real time. They might not necessarily be anything that has to do with my personal books, but just to show you physical uh, manifestations of the techniques that we talk about in the lessons. 
And also you can ask questions and sometimes I might diverge and just deal with the question that was asked and do a video on that. And I'll try to keep those videos to an hour. So, uh, you know, you can come and go as you please. Final thoughts. <clears throat> While your characters might often seem to have a life of their own as the author, you wield the ultimate control. It's a delicate balance between letting your characters express themselves and guiding them to stay true to the outlines you've designed. So you want to embrace this dynamic as a creative challenge, not a hindrance. And this is why structuring your story and characters might initially seem restrictive, but it actually empowers you as a writer. By define, defining clear paths and boundaries, you allow your narrative to unfold more smoothly and your characters to develop more profoundly within the framework you've personally set. This doesn't limit your creativity. It channels it, helping you create a compelling, cohesive narrative. So as you continue your writing journey, take moments to reflect on how your characters are indeed evolving. Are they serving their purpose in the story? Are they growing in ways that enrich the narrative? Use, use what you've learned today to ensure that your characters are not just alive, but also purposefully and integrally uh, uh, affect the narrative itself. Next video in this series, we're going to talk about how uh, to develop characters and watch them grow over the course of of a narrative arc. So we're going to, so you know how we, uh, we, we look at outlining and the 27 plot points. We're actually going to take an idea of the character arc and kind of place that into, um, we're going to start with like a summary and then we're going to say, how do we see this arc unfold and how do we have a payoff to that arc? So we're going to get to see that specific thing. So other than that, uh, you know, as we always say, uh, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and uh, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Love you, boy.